Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and today we'll be talking about DC track circuits. So let's get into it. So it's in the name that track circuits is an electrical circuit that is used for train detection. And this is where I just wanted to pay attention that most of the train detection systems are actually train vacancy detection systems in that they detect that the section is vacant or not. But if you see point number two, there are actually very few scenarios or very few applications in which track circuit is actually used to detect occupancy. For example, in a remote area, you could be using track circuit to detect the train. And then based on that occupancy, you could trigger something else. For example, a level crossing or, or there could be multiple applications. So what's the working principle? Now, this is probably the first circuit that you would have studied in electricity. Fortunately, track circuit also works exactly on that principle. That is, if you connect a battery through wires to a bulb, then that would light up the bulb. And then if you were to short the circuit, that would extinguish the bulb. Now we'll try to understand the same circuit in the context of track circuits. So the first difference you note is that instead of wires, we have tracks. And the second difference is that instead of this cable or instead of this wire that you use to short the circuit, we have axles. So it's basically the same circuit. The only difference is that instead of wire, you have tracks. And then instead of the cable, you have the axle. There's one more difference that I want us to note here is that the battery, it might look very simplified here but it's actually a bit more complicated. And we're going to look at that in one of the future slides. And then on the other side, where you see a bulb here, it's actually not a bulb, but it's actually a relay. And that relay energizes or de-energizes. So if you look at the diagram below, where you have an empty section or a vacant section, you have an energized relay. Think of it like a bulb that is lit. And then in this section where we have shorted the circuit, you have a de-energized relay. Think of it like a bulb that's extinguished. And then on a vacant section, again, we have an energized relay. So that's how track circuit detects train vacancy. So on this slide, I want us to visualize track circuits in the context of a railway system. So the diagram that you see above is a bit more crude. That shows that the line is split into multiple sections through the track circuits. And those track circuits report occupancy or vacancy in logical states. So on video wall, you can see that there are multiple track sections and those track sections then show you occupancy or vacancy. And the same information goes to interlocking. And based on that information, interlocking decides whether it's safe to set a route or not, whether it's safe to allow a train to proceed or not and all of the other safety critical decisions. Now we'll talk about how the system is fail safe. So first of all, the meaning of fail safe is that if there were to be any failure on the system, that the failure would be on the safe side. And we'll look at some examples here. The first example is a broken rail, where the rail is fully split apart. In that case, your relay is going to de-energize. So what that means is that now, this section will be shown occupied, which is a safe state, in that when your system thinks that this area is occupied, it's going to prevent another train from going into this section. An unsafe situation would be where there's a failure and your system allows train to go into it. Now, the second example is if something were to happen to your battery or the feed voltage. So in this case, the battery is fully blown out. It, it has caught fire. So what's going to happen in this circuit is that if your battery is compromised, then again, you would not have the feed voltage and that would then de-energize the relay. And what happens because of that? Because of that, the section will now be shown occupied and same as previous scenario, another train will not be allowed to go into it. Similarly, any cable breaks. If any of the cables on this side or on this side were to break, it's going to then de-energize the circuit again. It will de-energize the relay. So it will show the section as occupied and then same reaction as before. Now let's look at all the components of a DC track circuit. So on a high level, these are the components of a track circuit and we'll look at them one by one. Now the first one is insulated rail joint. 
So what insulated rail joint does is that it electrically isolates one circuit from the other. In that when you have this little circuit where you have battery and an energized relay, you want this circuit to be electrically isolated from the next circuit or the previous circuit. So the way you do that is by having this insulated rail joints which separate the circuit from the next circuit. If it were not separated then you could have interference or you could have any other supply that could then energize this relay and we don't want that. We want an isolated circuit. Now there are two types of insulated rail joints. One is nylon insulated rail joint and one is glued insulated rail joint. In a nylon insulated rail joint you can see that there are all these components made Made out of nylon which is electrically non-conductive and what that does is that is it isolates one circuit from the other now glued insulated rail joint is similar to what you see on the left the only difference is that it comes prefabricated and it is glued because of which it is stronger of course it's more expensive but it's stronger and it has a longer life. Now, because we are talking about insulated rail joint, I just want to talk about a minor variation in DC track circuits, which is we either have a single rail track circuit or a double rail track circuit. In a single rail track circuit, you have insulated rail joints only on one rail, and on the other rail, you have full electrical continuity. Because of that, you can use this other rail for traction return current. But then at the same time, you need some complicated circuitry here so that the traction return current doesn't interfere with the track circuit. And on the left, what you see is a double rail track circuit in that you have insulated rail joints on both of the tracks. But then if you want the traction return current, then you need something called a bond. And you have that bond, which again has some complicated circuitry to make sure that the traction return current passes through it, but it still keeps the DC track circuit isolated the second component I want to talk about is the ballast. Ballast is just a generic term that I'm using for track infrastructure. So if I were to oversimplify the track circuit, it will look something like this, that you have a battery and then on the relay side, you have one resistance. But in reality, you have ballast, you have sleepers, you have full track infrastructure. And the result of that is that you have these mini leakage paths between one track and the other. And because of that leakage path, what ends up happening is that the longer you go, the more leakage paths you have. And the more leakage paths you have, you can essentially end up in a situation that you have all of the current leaking out and not enough current left to energize the relay. So that's how ballast resistance affects the track circuit. So now the unit of ballast resistance is ohm kilometer. So what that means is that the longer you go, the lower your ballast resistance becomes. So at a certain length, your ballast resistance can actually get so low that the ballast itself can short the circuit. And when that happens, your track circuit will be permanently occupied. Now, not just that, there are many other factors that determine how poor or how good the ballast resistance or those leakage paths are. A few of those factors is how clean is the ballast. If there are more contaminants, then you could probably have more leakage paths. How well is the track insulated from the sleeper? You need to have proper insulation between the track and the sleeper. Otherwise, you could have sleeper as one of the leakage paths. Then what type of sleepers are used? Also, it depends on the weather. If it's a wet weather or a dry weather area. So the next two components that we are going to look at are rails and wheels. Both the rail and the wheel have to be clean. If they're not clean, then the rail and the wheel might not be able to short the circuit. So one of the ways it cannot be clean is if you have leaves on the rail or you could have contaminants on the rail like sand, like coal dust or mud and then you could have rust on the rails or rust on the wheels as you see here. So when any of that happens, you then risk a situation where a wheel will not be able to short the circuit. Now, this is a picture I pulled off of a British standard. And what this shows is that when you have a dirty rail with rust or leaves or any other contaminant, then you need a higher voltage for it to become conductive. So the next one is transmit or the feed. So primarily there are three types of arrangements of this feed. So one of the arrangement is that you have a battery and then you have a variable resistor. The reason why you have a resistor is that imagine if there was no resistor here, then the currents are going to be extremely high and they can damage the battery. The second type is that you have a battery, but then you also have a charger. So what that happens is that you have supply coming in, that supply feeds into the track circuit. 
and if the supply is unreliable then in case you have a power outage then in that case you have this battery feeding the track circuit and the third type is is when you have reliable power supply that we nowadays have on track systems so when you have that you basically bring in the ac power supply you then step down to the voltage that you need and then you then rectify so that you convert ac to dc and after rectification you feed it into the track circuit the next one we will talk about is the relay side so there's mainly only been two types of vital relays that we have used on track circuits so one of the relays is a shelf type relay and one of the relays is a plug in type relay and when I say they are vital relays, that means that those relays are designed so that there cannot be any unsafe failure. So ways to make it a vital relay is that the contacts are designed so that they won't weld. So now we'll look at just a small subset of failure causes. So I told you that track circuits have to be electrically isolated from the other track circuit. For that you have insulation rail joints. I also told you that the track circuits have to be well insulated from the sleepers so that sleepers don't form leakage paths. So the more insulation components you have, the more chances of failure you could have in that if any of this component fails, your track circuit could then fail. Then the next one is weather. If there is a lot of rain, if there's rain and if there's pooling, then you could have a track circuit permanently fail. If you have leaves, because of the leaves, your wheel might not be able to short the track circuit. Or you could have something called lipping. So what happens in lipping is that the rail starts to flow a little bit over the joint and this rail could then touch the other rail, essentially obliterating the insulation that was there before. So these are just a few of the failure causes. The intent was not to give you all of the failure causes, but just to give you a hang of how track circuits can fail. And last but not least, there was a rail accident that occurred precisely because of failure of DC track circuits. So the name of that accident is Coven Rail Accident. You can go look it up on Wikipedia. It will give you all of the information. But basically, cause of that accident was that there was sand applied to rails. And what happened because of that sand was that when your wheel went over the track, the wheels could not short the track circuit. And because of that, the track circuit still showed vacant. And another train was then allowed to proceed through at full speed. That brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in the next one.